Kia ora, good morning everyone. Rich Wong here. Welcome back to your channel. Today we are going to have a look at this S3 Hori 85mm f1.8 lens for Nikon Z. This is a native Nikon Z mount lens with autofocus and all the electronics support. On this channel, we have previously looked at quite a few different 85mm f1.8 lens for Nikon Z, including the one from Nikon, but also a few other third party lenses. What makes this S3 Hori special is that the official price is only $249, which make it one of the cheapest 85mm f1.8 lens for Nikon Z user. So in this video, we are going to have a look at how this lens performs, and I'm going to do some comparisons with the more expensive but also third-party Wilchox 85mm f1.8 lens and see if this S3 Hori lens can be a cheaper alternative and provides good value for money. Before we start, I want to mention the lens sample I used for this review was sent to me by S3 Hori. I do not have to return the sample after the review, but I also do not receive any money for this review. I do have an affiliate link in the video description below if you want to purchase this lens. I just want to make sure everything is clear before we start the review. When I bring this lens out of the box, the first thing I notice is the size and weight of the lens. This lens feels bigger and heavier than I expected for a 85mm f1.8 lens. So I then put it next to the Wilchox 85mm f1.8 and the size of these two lenses is actually pretty much the same. But the weight of the S3 Hori is definitely heavier even compared to the Wilchox which is already a pretty heavy lens. This S3 Hori lens weighs 626 gram. So it's about 80 grams heavier than the Wilchox or 150 grams heavier than the Nikon 85mm f1.8. The design of this lens looks a bit similar to some of the Olympus lenses. The reason why this lens is so heavy is because this lens has a full metal construction. The lens feels incredibly solid for a budget lens. It feels completely different from the $200 Meiki 85mm f1.8 lens that is very plastic and also feel a bit cheap. But with this S3 Hori, it definitely doesn't feel plastic or cheap at all. The lens has a large focus ring and the ring is pretty stiff but it turns very smoothly. It has no weather seal on the lens mount and there's also no aperture ring or any other switches or buttons on the lens, which is not unexpected for a budget lens. On the metal lens mount, there is a USB-C connector for future firmware update. So this is better than the Wheelchox, which use a micro USB connector. However, since S3 Hori is still relatively new to autofocus lens, so we'll have to wait and see if the company will provide firmware update for their lenses or if the USB-C port is just a checkbox on their packaging. The lens comes with a reversible plastic lens hood which is reasonably deep but the lens hood does look a little bit cheap probably because of the material they use and also the generic font they choose for the lens hood model number. The front filter thread is 72mm which is quite normal for a 85mm f1.8 lens. Let's talk about the lens autofocus performance. When I mount the lens on my Nikon Z6, the first thing I notice is the autofocus is very quiet. I almost can't hear any autofocus noise at all even when I use it indoor. The autofocus speed is also pretty fast. It seems to be a little bit faster than the Wilchox. Face detection works and continuous autofocus also works very nicely and smoothly. I certainly wasn't expecting this kind of autofocus performance for a lens that is only around $250. However, there was one time when the autofocus suddenly stopped working completely when I was taking photos. I end up have to switch off the camera and then switch it back on again and everything back to normal. It has only happened once, it hasn't happened again after that, but I thought I should mention it to you guys. 
this S3 Hori lens has some pretty noticeable focus breathing. If you look at this test footage, you can see the focus breathing very easily. However, this is not uncommon for 85mm lenses. The Realtrox also has a lot of focus breathing as well. And now let's have a look at the image sharpness. At f1.8, the center of the S3 Hori is already really good. It's very sharp and I don't see any chromatic aberration at all in this test photo. If you look at the Realtrox comparison photo, the Realtrox is still very good but just not quite as sharp as the S3 Hori. The Realtrox also has a little bit more chromatic aberration as well. At f2.8, the S3 Hori's center sharpness is now excellent. The Realtrox is also getting really good but the Realtrox still has a little bit of color finching that the S3 Hori doesn't have. Stopping down the lens from f2.8 doesn't really make any noticeable difference to S3 Hori's center image quality as the lens is already very sharp at f2.8. It is until around f11 then diffraction starting to make the photo a little bit softer. If you look at the corner, at f1.8 the S3 Hori is soft, really soft. I was a bit surprised by that but I checked my other test photos and they are all the same. I thought the soft corner may be caused by view curvature as my test photos were focused at the center of the frame. But then I checked the photo that I focused at the corner and the corner sharpness is still pretty much the same and still very soft. Stopping down the lens to around f4, then the corner of the S3 Hori becomes better but I really need to stop down to f5.6 for the corner to become sharp. And I noticed two things when I was looking at all these test photos. First, the S3 Hori has a slightly tighter field of view than the real chalks. The difference is quite small and I only noticed that when I was jumping between the photos shot with these two lenses. But the more noticeable difference is the color. All these photos were shot with the same white balance setting and were all captured within a few minutes. But the photo shot with the S3 Hori is a lot warmer and also has a little bit more green tint than the Realtrox lens. This is really quite noticeable. It doesn't really mean one is better, but I want to point it out to you guys. The minimum focus distance of the S3 Hori lens is 79cm or 2.59 feet. Interestingly, on the lens, it says the minimum focus distance is 2.95 feet, which I think is a typo. But anyway, maximum magnification is around 0.14, which is not bad. It is very similar to a lot of other 85mm f1.8 lenses in the market, including the Realtrox. Now, if you look at this photo shot at the minimum focus distance at f1.8, sharpness is okay, but there are some pretty obvious color finching. This is something I didn't notice when shooting at the normal distance, and we have to stop down to f2.8 to get rid of the color fringing. In comparison, the Realtrox has almost no color fringing at all at f1.8 when shooting at the minimum focus distance. Bokeh is very important for a 85mm f1.8 lens as other people would buy a lens like this to shoot shallow depth of field portrait photo and have the background dissolved. The bokeh from this S3 Hori lens is not bad. The bokeh balls near the edge of the photo can be a little bit of oval shape and has a bit of cat's eye effect, but it's not super swirly. The bokeh balls doesn't look too nervous. It doesn't have very noticeable halo ring at the edge. So overall, I think it looks pretty pleasant to my eyes. When taking photos at f1.8, we can see a bit of vignetting near the corner of the photo but the amount is acceptable. And once we stop down the lens to f2.8, then vignetting pretty much all disappeared. These are all JPEGs from the camera with vignette control set to normal. 
If I set the vignette control to off, then vignetting becomes a lot more noticeable at wide open. When taking photos with high contrast at maximum aperture, I see a bit of color fringing like this sample photo. And if we look at the local test photo, we can also see the color fringing quite easily. While the real trucks also suffers a bit of color fringing in this test photo, it's quite a bit better than the S3 Hori. In terms of distortion, the S3 Hori has a small amount of pin cushion distortion. It is pretty minor, just enough to be noticeable in this brick wall test photo. I don't think this small amount of distortion would matter for most kind of photos. Now let's talk about lens flare. Unfortunately, this is a pretty weak area for S3 Hori. You can get lens flare very easily with this lens. We can see a lot of lens flare in this test video, even though the lens hood was already installed onto the lens. To be honest, I was quite disappointed by that. The real chalks, while not perfect, performs much better in this side-by-side -side test. When I was taking real-world photos, it's also quite easy to see a bit of lens flare in my photos, so you really need to be careful if you like to take backlit portrait photos. To get sun stars from the S3 Hori, you need to stop down to around f8, then the sun stars becomes quite sharp, and the sun stars looks very nice at f16. If we compare it with the real chalks, real chalks sun stars looks slightly different, and overall, I prefer the sun stars from the S3 Hori a little bit more as I like sun stars with longer tails. I have reviewed a few S3 Hori lenses in the past on this channel, but this is the first time I reviewed their autofocus lens. It seems all the Chinese lens manufacturers are moving from manual focus lens towards autofocus lens with full electronic support and still maintains the very affordable price, which is definitely a great news for us users. For a lens that is just around $250, I'm very happy with the design and build quality of this lens. It certainly doesn't feel like a lens that is so cheap. However, it is a pretty chunky and heavy lens especially considering this is a f1.8, not a f1.4 lens. But if you don't mind the weight, then you will love the very solid build quality. Autofocus performance is better than I expected. It is very fast and very quiet. Even the continuous autofocus works reasonably well. Image quality wise, there are certainly a few issues. Corner sharpness is not quite there. If you want to use this lens for some landscape or any type of photos that requires corner sharpness, you will be disappointed. Lens flare performance is another major weakness. It's not to the point that the lens is unusable, but there are certainly a lot of room for improvements. So if you don't mind the image quality issues I mentioned, for example, if you only want to use it for portrait photo, so lack of corner sharpness doesn't really bother you, and you don't mind or actually prefer to have a bit of lens flare, then this lens could be a great budget choice as it's much cheaper than most other 85mm f1.8 lens in the market, and you got that really solid metal construction. But if you want a lens that has great overall image quality, then you probably should spend a bit more money and look at other options available in the market.